The opposition's calling on the Albanese government to follow in the footsteps of South Australia and ban young children from accessing social media platforms. Under the state's proposed laws, tech giants could face tough penalties if they let anyone under the age of 14 create an account. The coalition wants to take it a step further, lifting the age to 16 nationally. Because what we're seeing with the mental health of Australian children, especially girls, is a crisis. It is completely unacceptable and uh, inaction is not an option. Let's go live to the South Australian Premier Peter Malinowskis. Premier, thanks for your time. Does this report by the former High Court Chief Robert French, does this basically debunk the view that this can't be done? Yes, it does. It makes it clear, Kieran, that it is open to state legislatures but also the Commonwealth to regulate the activity of these social media services and we know it is necessary. This is a, a challenge that parents around the country are literally tearing their hair out. We see kids being done harm. We know that's true from a growing body of international peer-reviewed research. Um, so it's time for governments to act and, you know, I don't think any any leader around the country should sit on their hands on this matter and I'm, I'm very grateful for the support that a number of leaders across the political divide around the country are providing for the report that Mr French has uh, delivered for the South Australian Government because the 100% result here is we get a harmonised set of laws around the country and get on with the task of preventing kids being done harm. And I've had other state governments tell me that you've been open with the report and the information that you've got. So, ideally, yes. they can pick up the French report and run with it themselves. 100%, Kieran, that's exactly right. And I, I really want to pay tribute and, and give thanks to my uh, state and territory counterparts. Um, and I said, like I said, both, you know, both Labor but also... Um, Liberal leaders as well, who are supportive of this effort. Uh, this shouldn't be about partisan politics. This is just about getting some regulation in place in an area that is currently totally laissez-faire. These companies are allowed to do whatever they like, and we know from whistleblowers and amongst others that there is almost an industrialisation of addiction here, um, targeting young people, getting them addicted uh, to these social media services in a way that does them harm. I mean, it's. When we actually think about it, Kieran, it's it's mind-boggling that we haven't got to this point sooner about cha tackling this challenge. If it was cigarettes or alcohol or any other s product or service that yeah. does kids harm, we see governments respond, and I think this is required in this instance. And, and it is, as you rightly point out, an addiction in its own way. When it, you look at the age, I, I just want you to clarify, because I know you've put some thought to it. Why did you land at 14... Yes with parent verification over that? Because, as you put it yesterday, this empowers parents to say, look, this is what the government's saying. And so in those internal family conversations and dynamics, it shifts the balance. As we all know as parents, that's important. Now, why not make it 16? Because then you can remove that yeah. area of uh, doubt between the fit for the 15 and 16-year-olds. Well, look, quite frankly, um, Kieran, this is a, uh, an example of where we decided to imitate other uh, states around the world. So we saw Florida implement the ban, um, I think was one of the first movers in, in Florida, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, who's obviously got very different politics to, to myself. Uh, but he took a leadership position to his credit uh, and they did 14 and under, or under 14 for the ban and 14 and 15-year-olds with parental consent. I, don't, I, I think the, the idea of you know, having a carve-out for children and saying, look, this is a no-go zone, and then graduating towards adulthood, where ultimately, of course, young adults will have to make their own decisions, I think that makes sense, and that's why we've got that that inter that sort of period in the middle where we say, look, kids can get access, it's, it wouldn't be illegal, but it's got to be done with parental consent. Um, I think that just creates that model of graduating towards adulthood, which I think is appropriate in this instance. But, look... You know, the fact is that at the moment we've got an environment where any kid can do anything or, or any social media um, platform can give access to these kids willy-nilly. Now, some of them have internal policies, but most of them are honoured in the breach as far as we can tell. So uh, the French report, you know, it's pretty substantial, Kieran. It's a 276-page effort to really work through some of the detail on the issues and, 
it, I think it gives an impetus for governments around the country to act and we're rather optimistic that we can be a leader in that regard. Yeah, there's no doubt you are doing that. I, I wonder, do you think that the federal government might be able to pick up the report as well and, and, and crack on? Because they're talking about the, the age verification trial. Would you like Michelle Rowland and the, the communications minister to, to take this on and to speed things up? Look, we very much would welcome collaboration uh, with the Commonwealth. I've spoken to the Prime Minister myself about this issue and I'm very grateful for his interest in it. And the, the Commonwealth obviously is doing the age verification trial, which is welcome and it's, it's referenced in the report itself. But yes, I mean, the short answer is I think the 100% result here is in having South Australia pass one law, Victoria and Western Australia pass you know, a separate set of laws. What we really want is a harmonised set of laws across states or the Commonwealth intervening and legislating over the top. But I will say this, though. Um, I think there needs to be a degree of urgency, Kieran, because, I mean, what we know is that kids are being done harm now. Yeah. I mean, now. I mean, this is happening. And I think, you know, what I've been saying is that the 100% result we want to shoot for, uh, a, a single law across the country, great. But I'm not going to sit around and wait forever for that. So we've got to get on with it, get cracking, and... Um, I hope that this report provides the impetus to do that. And if look, other, enough other states or, or the Commonwealth, whoever's in charge, decides not to, to pursue it, that is their prerogative. But I'm going to be absolutely clear about this. There is not a circumstance where South Australia uh, no. isn't going to lead and isn't going to act on this because um, I just don't think we can sit around and bear our heads in the sand on this matter for too much longer. No, that the, the message of urgency is a really uh, important one. Obviously, that is to the, the federal government and other state jurisdictions to move on this. Yeah. That, that's, that's right, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, well I, I think everybody around the world. I mean, we're seeing, we're seeing legislators and leaders and, you know, policymakers around the world respond to this now because the evidence is so overwhelming, right? And uh, I just think we've got to get on and get cracking with it. And... I hope that this helps, this report accelerates that effort, which is why we commissioned it. I mean, Robert French, I mean, this is the former Chief Justice of the High Court, frankly, one of the, one of the smartest minds in the country. He's put a lot of effort into it. He, re, he developed the report in quick time. It's only been a, uh, a few months since we initiated the effort uh, because we do want to get cracking on this. And I just hope that yeah. uh, with the, and the, 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 the comments that have been made around the country just over the course of the last... 24 hours, I think, does demonstrate there's a degree of momentum, and I'm pretty optimistic we'll get there, Kieran. Yeah, and just to... If, before we move on from this issue, can you just elaborate on that that idea? Because I know from personal, very, very personal experience, having this example of what you're doing enables parents to say, look, the South Australian Premier's banning this. This is not appropriate for anyone below 14. And it extends to say, OK, you yeah. shouldn't have a phone at that age, or whatever else. It empowers, it shifts the balance. And I know it sounds funny to be talking about family conversations like that, but that's what these government moves do. Uh, precisely the point, Kieran, right? Because, you know, parents at the moment uh, are rendered almost, uh, you know, useless as part of this dynamic. Because if every single kid has got a phone and social media, and, you know, and the report references this in some detail, it, you know, phone, um, social media and on phones is now part of the social infrastructure of how young people engage with one another, right? It is fundamental. And, you know, so if you're a child, it's if a parent says, we're going to take your phone away, I'll not let you have social media, you are basically saying to that child, well, you will be excluded from engaging with your peers. And that's not that's not a satisfactory outcome. That's, that's impossible. You can't ask a kid to do that. You can't expect a parent to ask a kid to do that. So what we've got to say is, look, this isn't just true for one kid, this is true for all kids. That is to say, um, we're going to make this consistent so that all parents can collectively say to their children, no, sorry, this is against the law, it's not going to happen. And that makes the task a lot easier. Yeah. They did some research in the US, Kieran, which the Surgeon General drew to my attention, where they said to kids, you know, do you want to give social media up? And they all said no. But if you ask the kid, well, do you want to give social media up if you know all your friends are doing it too? They all said yes. <laughs> so it's even children who are willing to give up social media if they knew that all their, their mates were doing it as well. So 
I think it's, that the law is more than just a punitive measure on social media companies. It is also an enabler for parents, teachers, other leaders, uh, mentors out in the community to, to get kids, be able to engage with them in more healthy means. Premier Malinowskis, thanks so much for your time.